Hey everybody, welcome to the BWC Online Bible Study. Today we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 8. As we look at Genesis chapter 8 today, we're going to be talking about the flood waters recede. So we've been going through the Bible a chapter at a time, and um, now we're talking about Noah. Noah on the boat, and they have, have been through the 40 days and the 40 nights of the rain. Um, but then after all that rain, there's this flood that remains. And so it wasn't just 40 days and 40 nights on the boat and then you get off and you go back to life. Um, it was 40 days and 40 nights of rain and floods, waters coming up from below, waters coming down from above. And um, really the judgment of God being poured out and the ark is um, a place of salvation. Like Noah had positioned himself in right relationship with God and, and found this place of salvation. And so as we, as we think about this, you know, we just want to keep that, that positional, um, that positional holiness, that positional salvation that we have when we place ourselves um, in the middle of where God wants us to be. And so I'm going to read to you guys and we'll, we'll talk about it some more as we go. It says, but God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock on the boat. He sent the wind to blow across the earth and the waters began to recede. The water underground stopped flowing and the torrential rains in the sky stopped. So the flood waters gradually receded from the earth. So like inch by inch, the waters are going down. After 150 days, exactly five months from when the flood began, the boat came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Two and a half months later, as the waters continued to go down, the mountain peaks became visible. So, so as you're thinking about this, um, you know, just how long Noah was on the boat, how much they had been through, you know, how long it took to build the ark and then to trust God and be in the place where God had told him to be. Um, and then while he's on the boat, just the waiting, I don't know if you've ever been in a place where, um, maybe God's put something on your heart. Maybe you have a call on your life and it seems like, um, like God told you this and now you wait. And, and a lot of times he is preparing you for the next step. You know, we had a Tuesday night Bible study, um, not this, well, we had it this week, but the last week. And as we prayed, God put on my heart um, that this was going to be a year of next steps and transitions. Um, and so as I prepare my heart for next steps and transitions, as I prepare for what it is that God has for me, sometimes it can seem long in the waiting, you know, um, like little kids waiting for Christmas, or maybe you're going through something really hard and it's long in the process that you're going through. You know, my mom's really sick and, and this is not a, a quick thing. This is, this is a long illness. And, you know, the enemy would like to take a picture of where you are right now and say it's always going to be this way. Um, leads people to a lot of hopelessness um, in, in not knowing that, that some seasons are long, but they're always going to be an end to that. And, and that God is going to bring us to the next step and to the transition. And we're going to go from glory to glory in in our relationship with him if we're following him and if we're patient and we don't give up in the waiting and um and so that's what this made me think about as i was reading that today and in the notes it said noah did not hear from god for 150 days this was a test of his faith because he had no idea if the waters would dry up or when god would step into him step in to help him again but god had not forgotten noah or his family god's interaction with noah is recorded and inspires hope in the ways of trust if it seems that God has not acted in your life in a long time, learn from Noah. You can be confident that he loves you and is still at work in your life. For now, stay close to God and continue to obey his word. The Spirit will bring direction. The Spirit of God brings direction. I was listening to um, I was listening to study notes, um, or I was listening to um, 
a message about Genesis chapter 8 for you guys. And as I was listening to that, it was talking about the boat that was resting on the mountains. And, and it was like Hebrew words. And one of the Hebrew words, the root for the place of rest, um, was the same as Noah's name. And so God positioned the ark in this place to rest. And, and in the same way, God had positioned Noah um, to be there, to be saved. And it's like, are we positionally where God has asked us to be? And if we are, even in the waiting, even in the, the meantime, you know, we stay faithful. We do the last thing God told us to do, and we just keep doing it and, and trust him through what it is that you're walking through, no matter you know, how, how difficult it might be or how long it might be. Um, God has got you. He, he has not forgotten you. He's got good plans for your life. And a lot of times I found in my life that in the in-between is when we're learning things in the in-between is when God's preparing us and shaping us and we're going through things and he's adding to us because, um, maybe we're not, you know, at that, at that time of the call, maybe we're not quite ready for what it is that God has for us. But when the time is just right, um, if you're faithful and obedient, you know, and you follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, because following the lead of the Holy Spirit is so very important. And, um, you don't quench the spirit and you don't offend the spirit. You know, you, you dig your heart in and you focus in on God and one step at a time, he's going to take you where you're supposed to be. It doesn't mean it's always going to be fun. It doesn't mean it's always going to be easy. Um, but if he's with you, you can do anything. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Um, and so here's Noah on the boat and it's resting on top of the mountain, or it's resting on the mountains of Ararat, and then um, he's beginning to see the mountain peaks. After 40 days, Noah opened the window and that he had made in the boat and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the floodwaters on the earth had dried up. He also released a dove. Um, if the waters had receded, it would be able to find dry ground, but the dove could find no place because the water still covered the earth, so it returned to the boat. Noah held out his hand and drew the dove back inside. So one of the things that I had learned about on um, on the um, message that I was listening to by Dr. Baruch Corman that um, the, um, the ravens would stay more up in the treetops, but doves will spend more time on the ground. So so a raven coming and bringing something back would be different than a dove coming and bringing something back because it would be more on the ground. So that means that there is a place for the dove to go. And so, um, and so he's sending out the raven, he sent out the dove, and the dove could find no place and it came back. And it said, after waiting another seven days, Noah released the dove again. This time the dove returned to him in the evening with a fresh olive leaf um, in its beak, Noah knew that the floodwaters were almost gone. He waited another seven days and then released the dove again. This time it did not come back. Noah was now 601 years old. On the first day of the new year, 10 and a half months after the flood had began, um, the floodwaters had almost dried up on the earth and Noah lifted back the covering of the boat and saw that the surface of the ground was drying. Two more months went by and at last the earth was dry. So, you know, it, I, I remember feeling like this when I broke my leg one time. It was like every time I would go to the doctor, it's like, okay, okay, just six more weeks, just, just a couple more weeks. And then we'll come back in just a couple more weeks. And I just remember thinking, man, just tell me, just tell me it's going to be a year. Tell me it's going to be six months. That way I can plan my life, you know, and just the frustration that came in that. Um, but that's just the way it is sometimes. Like you, you just got to keep checking and keep trying and keep checking. And, you know, if you think about the, the depth of the water and how much had saturated into the ground, it wasn't going to do any good for them to, to get out of the boat and not be able to survive. So, they had to wait for the right, right time. They had to be patient in that. Um, and then God said to Noah, so Noah's checking and checking and checking, but when it was really time to leave, God said to Noah. Um, so it wasn't like some sign that Noah saw. 
God told him what to do. Then God said to Noah, leave the boat, all of you, your wife, your sons, and their wives. Release the animals and the birds and the livestock and all the little small animals that scurry on the ground so they can be fruitful and multiply through the earth. Um, so Noah, his wife, their sons, and their wives left the boat. And the large and the small animals and the birds came out of the boat pair by pair. And then Noah built an altar to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings um, that animals and the birds that had been approved for that purpose. And then the Lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice and said, I will never again curse the ground because of the human race, even when everything they think or imagine is bent toward evil from childhood. I will never again destroy all living things. So um, the first thing Noah does is worship the Lord when he comes off of the boat and you think about that sacrifice that that he gave um the sacrifice of the animals and um you know we're called to be a living sacrifice you know god calls us to positions of, of doing things for him and um and when we give ourselves up for him um you know we really become that living sacrifice and um and saved for a purpose. You know, God has got a purpose and a plan for you. And um, and he's got good plans for your life. And he has got a future and a hope. And we have got salvation in and through him. And we've got heaven to look forward to. And it says, as long as the earth remains, um, there will be planting and harvest. And there will be summer and winter and day and night. Um, so he says he's never again going to curse the ground because of the human race, even though everything they think or imagine is evil. And, um, you know, there will be a day when God um, remakes the heavens and the earth, but there's going to be a judgment of fire, not, not a judgment of flood. And God has um, continually, is continually giving us every opportunity to turn our hearts toward him. And, and, you know, so as we wrap this up today, just the thoughts that I want to leave you with are that, um, that God has purpose and plan. Sometimes the waiting is long, um, but there's purpose and a plan for that too. And so we have to be patient and we have to wait, you know, and like I said, Noah was sending out birds and testing and trying, you know, just so that he could see for himself. But when it was time, God told him. God let him know. And so just in that in between, um, will we be faithful to him? Will we turn our hearts toward him? That's what I'm going to leave you guys with today. And I will catch you back again in Genesis chapter 9.